Why is the buttercup yellow? What makes it yellow? If you ask a physicist, you may get the answer. It looks yellow because the petals reflect the yellow wavelengths of light and absorb all the rest. This is, however, not a correct explanation. Let me show you why. I project this picture onto a white screen and by help of a glass prism turn the narrow slit into a colorful spectrum. Scrutinizing this spectrum, you see that the yellow part of it is quite narrow, which means that if the color of a yellow object were the result of absorption of all light, except the narrow region, then yellow would be a very dark color, dark brown maybe, but definitely not yellow, which is by its very nature a bright color. Next I mount a yellow patch on a white screen that can be moved horizontally like this. I project the light spectrum onto the screen and move it so as to make the spectrum fall onto the yellow patch. As you see, it reflects the red and green, but darkens the blue-violet part of the spectrum. Look once again and observe the darkening of the blue-violet part, in other words, the short wavelengths of the light falling onto it. So the correct explanation of the yellow color of the buttercup seems rather to be yellow results when the blue-violet wavelengths in the illumination are absorbed and all the rest reflected. This observation can be symbolized in a diagram like the above, showing the so-called reflectance of the yellow sample. So this is what yellow is from the point of view of optics. Our observation has interesting consequences one is that yellow is much alike white. The essential difference concerns the blue-violet part of the spectrum. Hence, yellow is more distinct in daylight than in warm light. We can simulate such illumination with the help of a yellow transparency. The text is no longer seen in this light. Another example. The difference between the yellow and the white areas almost disappears. Look at the borders. This is because the white areas get a yellow tint in this light. But more important, the yellow areas shift towards white due to chromatic adaptation. The optical affinity of white and yellow is the reason why yellow is the brightest among hues. Goethe, in his Farbenlehre, speaks about yellow as the color most akin to white. So, whereas it is true that yellow merges out of white, it is still a bit uneasy on white ground. On grey it gets its real colorfulness, being without competition the brightest area in view. Complete darkness doesn't suit it either. And finally, to speak of dark yellow is a contradiction in terms. It loses its yellow quality, turning into olive green. Before concluding this session, let me take us one step further towards a proper definition of optical color. This time, I will use a computer program displaying the relation between spectral distribution and color under standard conditions. You recognize the diagram representing the reflectance of the yellow sample, here plotted against a wavelength scale with 30 steps from 400 to 700 nanometers. Looking at this, you may argue all right, a broad distribution may be typical of yellow, but the yellow wavelengths are still there and determine the yellow of the petals, whereas the other wavelengths, 
on the sides contribute to its brightness. Not even this is a necessary condition for yellow. Consider the following. We start from the typical yellow spectral distribution and take away the yellow wavelengths at 570 and 580 nanometers, transferring them to another distribution shown at the right, building up a light consisting of only yellow wavelengths in addition to a small amount of white which is necessary to make it possible to show the resulting color on a computer screen. Eventually we arrive at a color matching the color on the left side. Let be that we will have to increase its intensity to make the two identical. Anyway, here we have two light spots with identical color, one of them with a spectrum dominated by wavelengths around 580 nanometers, the other one missing exactly these wavelengths. The lesson we learn is the color of a light flux is not dependent on the absence or presence of any particular wavelength. The consequences of this will be the topic of a forthcoming lecture.